Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The play- NBA playoff picture is getting clearer and clearer by the day, and as that happens, the storylines keep getting better and better. Alex, what happened in, in the NBA last week? Yeah, a lot happened, um, but as always, we'll do the uh, little fantasy recap. First, um, I won, obviously. Uh, James, you had a heck of a week as well. You won trade-in with a win, uh, and Tyler lost, so that's embarrassing. Are we Tyler, in now? Does it even matter? We have so we have lost. one. Yes, it does trade in, and this is why it matters. So we have this is our last week before playoffs start, and currently James and I are locks. It's not going to matter. But Tyler and Garrett are both tied at eight and seven. And the beautiful thing is, trade in you're playing uh, Garrett, and Kylie is playing Tyler. So mm-hmm. one of the two of you are going to be spoilers, and you're going to kick one of them out of the playoffs. Be awesome. Um, obviously, Please I hope win. Tyler gets kicked out of the playoffs because I think wow. that's funnier. Wow. Uh, personally, but uh, yeah, <laughs> Going so down, we'll, Garrett. yeah, we've got one more. We've got one more week, and then we'll get into the playoffs with that. Um, it's been a it's been a fun ride. All, all of our first times playing fantasy basketball had no idea what we were doing. Um, but yeah, so the storylines for the NBA this week or this past week. Uh, I don't really want to talk about this because it's bumming me out, but we kind of have to. Um, LeBron and AD are still hurt. Uh, they've got a little bit of time to go before they're, they're back. Kyle Kuzma's missed games. Andre Drummond has already missed games and he's been a Laker for about four seconds. Uh, they are currently, the Lakers are currently in the five seed in the, uh, in the West there. They're about three and a half games up on the Mavs to be the, to then fall into that play in tourney. Um, you know, with AD and LeBron out, uh, Tyler, how much trust can we put into this depleted Lakers squad to avoid that play in tourney? You know, it's getting murkier and murkier as we keep going on and on. Um, I was, I got the update on the on LeBron and AD, and I think uh, AD is about ten to fourteen days away, and LeBron's about three weeks away, which was way longer than I thought it was. I thought we were gonna get AD back. I don't know, maybe this week, and LeBron in a couple weeks, but. Nope, they're still they're still far. I can't even remember the last time AD played in the Lakers uniform. It's it seems like he's been missing all season, honestly. Um, so these these this last you know month and a half or so without those two guys, um, it's been brutal. Um, they've been I think their record they're two and fourteen now for their loss tonight to the Knicks uh, without those two in the lineup. Uh, so a, obviously a below average uh, basketball team, uh, probably not a playoff team without those two guys. You know, but thankfully, when they did have those two guys in lineup, they built themselves a really good buffer. Um, so they, they were able to put themselves in a position to kind of ba- basically play 500 basketball until they get back. Um, can they stay in that? They, they, they've fallen from a two to a five. Um, they're, they're struggling. Um, so I think, I think they might fall out of that six spot before they get both those guys back. But I think before the season's over, they'll f- – climb back into that top six um it's gonna be really close i think the the two teams that are um kind of trying to catch them are portland and dallas um and then memphis is right below them but i but i think portland and dallas are the the two threats right there um portland's you know a a great basketball team i think dallas is playing a lot better basketball than than they did early on the season um so we'll see they uh you know the the schedule coming up there's a few you know kind of stretches i see that are going to be really pivotal for them uh, I think next week they have a, a four game stretch where they got back to be- back to back against Utah and Dallas. So those four games, so Utah, Utah, Dallas, Dallas, and they'll probably be without both AD and LeBron for those games. That's going to be a rough one. Um, but then after that, they kind of got a little bit of an easier schedule um, and they'll, hopefully they'll have um, AD back. And then hopefully they'll have LeBron back before they go through a uh, stretch where they have, they have in four straight games, they have Denver, the Clippers, Portland, and Phoenix. Um, that's like, like the beginning of the last month of the season. Hopefully the bronze back by then it's kind of like, that's right around the timetable of when he can return. So hopefully he comes back then and hopefully they can finish out, you know, the last six or eight games or so on a, on a good run. And hopefully that'll push him into the top six, but yeah, man, I mean, this, this team without those two guys, obviously it's a star driven league. You have two stars on that team. They're both not playing. They're doing their best. I mean, that win against the nets the other night was, was, was pretty great. Um, but it's just, you never know what you're going to get from this team. Um, they're, they're, they're trying their best. I think they're holding down the fort as best they can. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be close. I, like I guess I, I think they'll fall out of the six spot. I think at some point within the next two weeks. Um, but then I think hopefully with AD back, hopefully, and LeBron coming back shortly after they'll eventually uh, climb back in, 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 into the top six. Okay. So you're saying they, they drop out, but they will get back in with LeBron and AD assuming LeBron and AD come back in that general timetable that you just went over. Correct. Yeah. They, I mean, those, those Mavs games are going to be pivotal. I mean, if they can win both of those, that's a huge swing. Um, yeah. They, you know, they've been five and five over their last 10 games, um, you know, big win over the nets and then kind of a dud against the Knicks tonight. So I hope that they can, they can figure it out somehow, you know, they are still in that top six. I just think it's because those teams in the bottom kind of or middle-ish chunk of the West just sort of beat up on each other. And then those other top kind of four or five teams just destroy the rest of them. So as a Lakers fan, you know, we want them, I want them back, but you're, you're totally right. It's a very star driven league. And without them, the Lakers will not win a playoff series. It doesn't, they will not win one. It doesn't matter. I mean, what like we we saw that when Kobe got hurt and they still they couldn't get past the first the, the first round with how Dwight Howard and Steve Nash on the roster. So uh moving on, Chris Paul. He is leading the Suns to a top three finish in the West, most likely. It's looking that way. Um he's a dark horse MVP candidate. This is now the second year in a row we've seen him bring a team that was I would say middle of the pack at best into, you know, the top echelon of teams. Um, I don't think any of us expected the Suns to be this good at the beginning of the season, but at this point, I think we have to consider them as a team to come out of the West, um, especially with the injuries to LeBron and AD, you know, that really opens up the West for the rest of the teams. Um, but specifically Chris Paul, James, is it, you know, he's getting up there a little bit. Is it time we officially anoint him as a top three point guard, point guard of all time. Top top three of all time, like all time, of all of, of of all of the times. Add yeah, them all no. up together. <laughs> top three. De- all definitely, time. definitely not. Uh, top three is a little too high. Actually, okay. very high. You can make an argument for top fifteen, but top three, eesh, that's a little untouchable. There's mainly because there's been a ton of great players over the years and the NBA has been around for a long time. And there was a bunch of talent before him. There's a bunch of talent now. A um, couple of points against his case of not being a top three NBA and top three point guard of all time is he's never won MVP. Uh, in his career, he was ranked a top five player one time in a season. That was his highest, was number five. And I think to be considered as the top, one of the top point guards ever, you got to be considered to be one of the top three players of the season. And that was never the case with him. He's never made it out of the Western conference finals. Like he's a great player. He's a great leader. He's going to be a surefire hall of famer. And he's almost out to double double in his career, but most of his work and most of what you're basing his top three thing off of is his intangibles. And that's not going to make a top three position. If we're going based off intangibles, Derek Fisher should be part of that conversation. Derek Fisher had some great intangibles. He was a great leader. Every team he went on, they won. The fact of the matter is he's not even part of this conversation at all. Um, to kind of top it off, I just want to name a couple point guards of all time that I think are ranked ahead of <laughs> Chris Paul. And there's a bunch. You go Magic. You go Isaiah Thomas. You got Steph. Steph is, the, Steph is for sure ahead of Chris Paul, mainly because he's going to break the three-point record and has won MVP and has won the Larry O'Brien Trophy. Uh, John Stockton, Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, AI, Jerry West, Oscar Robertson. That's a bunch of names where I think are ranked higher than Chris Paul. Chris Paul is a great player, no doubt. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. You can make the case for top 15, but top three, definitely not. Okay, I actually do agree with you. Um, I think for sure Magic Johnson is the best point guard of all time. I don't think there's much of a case to be said about that. Um, I just I just thought he deserved a little respect for what he's done this season. Um, and you're right. The NBA has been, it was a point guard driven league for a really long time. And then it kind of went to the big men and now it's being led back that direction. Um, to be honest, Chris Paul might not even be a top three point guard in the league right now with how many good point guards there are out there. But 
Oh, man, I do love the D fish thing, man. I forgot about him. I love, <laughs> love D fish, dude. Love D fish. Um, you're you're totally right, Chris Paul. You know, he, and he gets a terrible rap. He's been accused of being a really bad teammate. Um, you know, obviously, none of us are in the locker room. We have no idea if that's how true that is or not. But he keeps getting shipped around. He did play on some really terrible New Orleans teams back in the day. Um, could never – the Clippers, you know, when he was on there, could never quite figure it out. You know, he got paired up with James Harden. That didn't go well. Um, you know, and the Suns team is probably the best team he's ever played on in his age 36 season or however old he is. Those Clipper teams were good, but they never – they could never quite figure it out. So, um, I agree with you. Um, just I think he deserves a little bit of respect for what he's done this season, bringing the Suns team into a top spot in the Western Conference. Um, moving on. So, uh, speaking of Steph Curry and his team, they're the number two overall pick, James Weissman, has torn his meniscus um, and is likely out for the rest of the season. The um, – Warriors are holding on by a thread. I mean, Steph had his bruised ass. So I just like to bring that up. <laughs> uh, they're currently in, in the 10th spot in the Western Conference. Um, you know, they were hurt all year last year, and they ended up, you know, getting rewarded with the number two overall pick, obviously, who then, as I just mentioned, went down. Um, realistically, the Warriors do not have a chance to go deep in the Western Conference. Um, Eric, is it time for the Warriors to shut it down, start losing, and just reset for next season? If I'm living with the mindset I had like two hours ago, I would say yes. If I'm living with the mindset in the future, I would say yes. If I'm living in the <laughs> present right now, watching them in front of my face, beating the shit out of the Nuggets right now, Wow. I might say no, but that's this is one game. But here's the thing. They sit in the 10th spot, like you said, literally hanging on by a thread because this year the NBA is going to have the, the play-in games, right? Is that the seeds 8, 9, and 10 or 7, 8, 9, and 10, I believe? Yep. We'll have play-in games for those last two spots. So if they can hang on, they got about less than 20 games, I believe, left they're going to have to battle it out. And I feel like all year I keep saying they're not going to do it. And every time I say that they do battle it out and they win all these close games and they beat good teams. Um, but I mean, shit, this, you know what I want to say? I want to say they slip out of a spot and the Pelicans take that 10th spot. Um, Cause they're like two, maybe a game and a half back from them. So they're, they're right on their tail. Um, and it's going to leave the Warriors with jack shit accomplished this season. They've had their glory in the past, and it's time for them to feel like the rest of the NBA and lose in a fashion where they don't see the postseason again. But that's what I want to say. But Steph Curry has 50 points right now. He just broke Wilt Chamberlain's record. Um, and they're beating the hell out of the Nuggets, which actually helps the Clippers and the Lakers. But – Shit. L let me just finish it with this. <laughs> Some notable games that they have left. Nuggets right now. They're going to win probably. <laughs> Celtics, which they could probably beat the Celtics actually because the Celtics are playing like shit. 76ers, that's going to be tough. Mavs, that's going to be tough. Jazz, Suns, Grizzlies. All three of those, like you said earlier, the Jazz and Suns have pretty much been demolishing teams like the Warriors. Um, the Grizzlies will be a battle of a game, but that could be about five losses right there. Five losses, too many to make them slip out of a spot. Uh, I want to say, because I don't like the Warriors, that they will not make it. But right now watching them, it just looks like they have a spark. Clay Thompson's on the bench just hyping them up. I'm like, fuck, come on, Clay, stop hyping them up. You're going to fucking get them into the playoffs. But James, I saw you snarling at me. I know you, yeah. you and your boy Wiggins. <laughs> I just wanted to go back to Eric's, not Eric's, but Alex's like initial question of, do they start, do they cut it and just start losing now? And I say no, mainly because you want to build a winning culture, a culture that doesn't just lose when there's probably no win in sight, you know? 
Steve Kerr and his staff aren't going anywhere. They're going to stay as the coaching staff of this Warriors team for years to come. And that's a pedigree that he deserves. That's what he's accomplished. That's respect he garners. That being said, he's a winner. And you don't want to flip the script. You don't want to tell your players that now, because we, we, we probably won't go anywhere, let's just start losing. That's going to spread down. It's going to go down to like a game level where now you're down by 20 points in the fourth quarter. All right, let's just stop trying. No, there's always a chance. You can go on a run. You can get hot. You can come back from a 20-point deficit. That's a culture you're trying to build while still competing now. Um, case in point, the Dolphins a couple years ago, they, were, they started off terribly. They had an 0-8 record, and everybody was saying tank for Tua. Brian Flores said, no, fuck that. We're going to compete. We're going to compete hard. And they did well. And they're continuing to do well now because of the culture that they've set. And they got Tua. Like, they got what they wanted by still playing that the way the way that they were coached to do and competing day in and day out and trying to get better day in and day out. If you're sending the message that we should just quit now because we're not going to win, nobody's going to try. Nobody's going to get better. And you play this game to get better. You play to compete. That's what sports is all about. Let's do the Sabres. Is that why we I like sports? <laughs> okay, but the thing, let's say the Sabres thing is that they're going to get an entire <laughs> new coaching staff. Like that culture is gone at this point. You're right. I mean, so I, I see your point, and, but they already have a winning culture. They still have that same staff that went to five NBA finals in a row or whatever it was. But, but I mean, I'm talking about the players. I like know. The but, players aren't the same players. <laughs> I know, but like last year, they quit. Steph Curry got hurt. He could have come back, and they pretty much were just like, nope, we're out of it. Let's lose a bunch, end up with the number two overall pick. You know, if you go by that mentality again, you still get Steph next year. You hopefully get a healthy Clay Thompson. You get a hope, uh, healthy James Wiseman. You still got, you know, those get other a LeBron. Teams. Yeah. See, I don't know if they <laughs> I, quit. I just think they were devoid of talent. Like, who on the team now played Steph last Curry season? could have come back to play. He, he played three games, broke his hand, and then missed the rest of the season. And they pretty much said, oh, yeah, we're just going to shut him down. Um, or are they listening to the the – Sports medicine people, not like Doc Rivers did, but did they listen to the doctor and say he's not ready to play? So let's just hold him out. Well, the fact that they actually came out and said, yeah, he could probably play, but we're just going to shut him down for the season is why I'm saying that. Okay, well, yeah. Like, that, that I guess, <laughs> there we go. My, uh, my question would I be, mean, I'm sure they also listen. Go ahead. My question would be how many how many draft spots are they going to fall back? I mean, what, four? Like, maybe? Like, is that is that worth it? I I don't know. I, I don't know the draft class. I don't know what to expect. Is it worth it though? Like you're not going to get to the second. I mean, you're way ahead of the Pistons. You're way ahead of the Timberwolves. Yeah. Way ahead of the Rockets. The other problem is with the NBA, it's a how the ping pong balls lottery. fall. Oh, it's a draft lottery it's, as well. It's a draft lottery. <laughs> I mean, it's that's why you, they're, I, you know, I see that. Yeah. So I see that. You, all, you get a small percentage of you know, getting the number one overall pick. I mean, they're, they're probably too far out of it at this point to actually be in that lottery, but like they're, in a, they they're in a tough spot. It's like, if you yeah, do that, they're, they're, like, they're, eh. they're in this, they're in this tough spot with where they are in the standings, where they are, what conference they play in just geographically, you know, I don't, they'd probably be like a six seed in the East if they, you know, if they were in that conference. So, it was just a, an interesting idea. I mean, I don't think they will do that. I think Steph is, and Steve Kerr are way too competitive. And, you know, I'm not a huge Warriors fan, but you kind of want to see Steph in the playoffs. Like, yeah. how fun would it be? He makes the play-in tournament. They, he, he drops 50 and then 60 in back-to-back games. And you, now You know what would be great, too, play a series. is if they make it, they'd probably play the Jazz first round. And... That's not an easy series for the Jazz. Like, that's a potential six, maybe seven game series. That's very true. With, like what you just said, Steph Curry catches on fire. He, all of a sudden, he's in the playoffs again. But I agree with you. They're not going to go deep. It'd be nice to see them, you know, tire the Jazz out or something like that. Um, but then I, again, you want to see, like, Zion in the playoffs too. Fuck. So it's going to come down to the wire. I would just say that there's a lot of value in playing. I, I would feel like there's a lot of value for a, you know, Damian Lee or, or a, um, a Wiggins playing with Curry in a playoff, you know, even if it's a couple games, I think there's this value there. You just kind of learn what it's like to be there with 
a guy who just is the best in in the playoffs. So maybe that in and of itself is kind of intangible value that it's not worth, you know, falling back. That's a very good point because other than Steph and Draymond, most of even like, I don't think Andrew Wiggins, if Andrew Wiggins has played in the playoffs, it's been one time and maybe the, and they probably got swept in the first round because they're probably the eight seed. So that's a good point. A lot of those players that they're young team, other than those two guys, and, you know, most of them have probably not had much playoff experience. Um, okay, moving on to the very last one. This is just kind of the, like, it came out of nowhere, I, I thought. Um, but Alex Rodriguez, as in A-Rod, the baseball player, is now a – Tyler's already shaking his head. Is now a part, a part owner of the Minnesota Timberwolves. He tried to buy the New York Mets and didn't get it. Um, you know, early like uh, in the baseball offseason, we've already got a pretty eccentric owner in the NBA. Well, well more than one, Steve Ballmer, Mark Cuban. We got some we, we got some weirdos like <laughs> owning some NBA teams. Um, trade in. What like what do you think about a Rod? He's now an owner of the Minnesota Timberwolves. It kind of feels like the most random team that he could be a part owner of. Um, yeah. Just what are your what are your thoughts on a Rod as an as an owner in the NBA? It, 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 it's interesting and i it, look i i don't i didn't i didn't follow enough baseball to know you know how much hate a rod gets from the entire baseball community i i spent 30 minutes watching a youtube video going <laughs> through his career as to why people hate him and it, it's stunning i mean i was like a rod he's like everybody like he's a he's, a, he's amazing right no i mean not really um <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of a he's kind of an ass kind of the biggest piece I'm, of shit <laughs> but with that said though we have to admit he is he has celebrity status he brings some he, he brings some oh, the word the, the best i could the best i could bring is some kind of like credibility in that mm. it's someone who actually is kind of a hollywood s type of guy that's going to come in there and actually make the timberwolves seem kind of like interesting like they're not at all right now and and players don't want to go to a place that's not very interesting so uh, he might just bring that star power that hey like th this is our new owner also his his partner in um uh his partner in uh was i'm um, sorry was mark uh, lore his partner mark lore is going in 50 50 with him that guy is a very is a tech savvy guy that's that has a vision an entrepreneurial vision that just might be what the timberwolves need to actually move the move the franchise in the right direction they just need a a fresh eye something that's a little more you know pizzazz i guess is the word sexiness if you will um that being said i think the biggest worry that that fans have is 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 this group going to be, you know, moved to Seattle because obviously a rod spent his first years in um, Seattle and already there was questions whether the Minnesota Timberwolves would be moving to Seattle. Also with that being said, I, uh, it does seem like the, the NBA is, it would be more focused on, on expansion. And that makes sense because expansion gets you more money than moving a team. Like expansion fees are kind of a big deal. So why, why wouldn't you just build a team in Seattle? Um, I don't think that, I, I don't know, but I, I think that that's a, that's a relatively legitimate fear of the fans, but I think that they should be happy in that they're actually getting an, a couple owners that are a little more eccentric, a little more out there, a little more, they, they have some gravitas to them. We hate them. We hate, we hate a rod. I understand that, but he just like, he's a celebrity. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a power guy that kind of demands the, the 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 attention and and for some especially i don't mean i, I don't mean to mean this in an offensive way and for the nba that's what nba players kind of look like they, they're kind of looking for that that gravitas that you know that's why no one goes to minnesota that's why you want to play in la that's why you want to play in new york that's why you want to play in um you know i don't even know if golden state's the right name but uh, i would say brooklyn you know th those names are kind of big names and people want people like that and Minnesota doesn't have that. They're the worst team in the league. They're playing awful. They're so bad. They're trash. This might be what they need to give them a little oomph. I'm not saying I like them, but I, I, I am trying to give some kind of light as to this whole situation. Yeah, I feel that that's a really good take. I mean, again, the, you know, traditionally the basketball season starts in October ends depending on, you know, the regular season ends, you know, end of April, uh, mid-May finishes up, you know, part of the way through June. 
um, which means you're playing over the winter. And I'm pretty sure it gets cold as fuck in Minnesota during the winter time. So, yeah. Do you really want to be, you know, a January 5th home game against, you know, the, I don't even, like, the Kings? And you have to go, oh, great, it's negative 30 outside. We're going to have 17 people in the stands. Or I could go play in Miami where it's 85 degrees and it's fucking lit. So I, I totally get it. And, I mean, I know this is – and, unfortunately, in the sports world, the coasts teams get all the love and attention. I mean, every, co- every team you just named was pretty much on either the West or the East Coast. Minnesota's right dab in the middle. They've been terrible for a long time. Um, you know, and it and this isn't like a great comparison because it is LA, but when Magic Johnson and the group that bought the Dodgers came in to kind of revamp it, that, I mean, Magic Johnson's a huge figure in the sports landscape. And, you know, granted, people want to come play for the Dodgers. They're an historic franchise, yada, yada, yada. But A-Rod can bring that to Minnesota. Um, I didn't even think about them possibly moving to Seattle. Um, that would be it's really interesting. Stumblings, but yeah, the current ownership does not want that, but I don't think they, I would be surprised if they did. I mean, they still yeah. have a very loyal fan base and the, um, St. Paul, Minneapolis area is a pretty large area and there's not a whole bunch of other big cities close. Um, right. so I, I still think that, you know, I would be surprised if they moved, you know, Seattle is looking for a team, um, you know, ever since the Sonics left to become the Thunder. So I like that take. Um, I can only imagine like a Dallas Mavericks, Minnesota Timberwolves game and like Mark Cuban and A-Rod like doing some dumbass fucking thing on the court like at halftime. Probably would. Yeah. Um, well, they, they share a screen on Shark Tank because A-Rod. Yeah, their buddies on Shark Tank. You know, who who knows what's going to go on? I think, the, I think the biggest thing is A-Rod has money and he wants to spend it. And yeah, he put it in the in the franchise. It's a franchise that needs it. Guys, yeah. it's valued. It's the 29th most valuable NBA franchise. There are 30. They're not a very valuable <laughs> franchise. Last? And he need he might be able to improve that. Who's last? Yeah. Who's last? Um, I'm going to say the Kings, but I don't know. Mm, that would not surprise me. It makes sense. Even though I the Kings know, Arena no, is dope. Their new I know arena, they're like 28-29. The Timberwolves okay. are 28-29. Okay. Um, Tyler, you've been shaking your head. Do you want to do you need to rant about A-Rod for a little bit? Or I just I just don't like A-Rod. A-Rod. It's yeah. just it's one of those things, man. I just I did he's just, I don't we could have a whole other segment about A-Rod and why I don't yeah. like A-Rod, but I just yeah, I don't like it. Okay. Let's We're gonna have to, gonna video have to and I can send it to you. Yeah, trading. You're right. You're right. About, like everything you said was right, but I still don't like it, Rod. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I'll yeah. leave it at that. <laughs> I'm gonna. Ha- we're gonna have to go back to episode like one or two and figure out if he was on my top ten. Yeah, I was. Games. I was thinking about he that. Definitely was. Yeah, yeah, was he? I don't remember. So, uh, good call, traded. Um, other than that, that's what I got for the NBA this week. Um, it'll be another fun week coming up. Um, but James, that's all I got. Another solid segment, Alex. I hope you guys learned something and refresh your memory of what happened last week. This week will be just as exciting as Alex just mentioned. 